Okay, the next thing I want to kind of show you is the board where I laid out everything at. Now, my solar charge controller hasn't come from China yet, and that will end up going up in this area right here. Um, however, uh, probably just to get this system up and going and play with it, I'll bypass the solar charge controller and charge the batteries a little bit right off of my solar panel. Um, but what we have is um, basically all my wires laid out nice and neat. Now, everything that's positive on my board is wrapped in red vinyl electrical tape, which I bought at Home Depot for a couple of dollars. And then everything black is in uh, black electrical tape. And on the black, you can buy a 10-pack of it for $4. So I bought a 10-pack of black electrical tape, so I'll have plenty forever and ever. Um, down here, you can see my 50-amp fuse. Um, I bought that 50-amp fuse for uh, $1.50 at the electronic surplus store. Um, Besides the wire, that was the most expensive thing I bought. Um, and that's a really good price for a 50 amp fuse. And I just used a couple of bolts I had out in the garage to bolt my terminals on, onto it. Um, now, this is my power inverter. I found this refurbished on eBay for about $20. It's a Cobra 475. Works great. Um, I've run it up to the full 400 watt load and had no problems whatsoever with it. Um, and then I got me a small electrical box and a regular AC light fixture here. And this actually runs off of the 12 volt side and comes into here. And this light will be powered on 12 volts. It won't go through the inverter. That way I can come out, kick on my light and have light in my shed, but not have to turn on the inverter. The inverter is nice uh, for running power tools and stuff. But if you can avoid running stuff off of it and run straight off the 12 volts, it's usually going to be much more efficient. It's a modified sine wave inverter, which means that it puts out a modified uh, sort of square wave instead of a true rounded sine wave. Um, and it's about 85% efficient, most of them are. Um, so that means you lose 15% of your power in the conversion. If you get a true sine wave inverter, you're going to lose even more than that. They're typically less efficient. So anytime you run out to 12 volts, you're better. Um, got these little brackets and I just mounted everything down to this board. I got this board at Home Depot. Um, it's pre-cut and I think it was $8. Yeah. Okay, one other thing I just want to cover real quick is fuses. Everything needs to be fused. You need to have a fuse coming from your battery bank. Um, you need to have a fuse going for your, your light and your direct 12 volt appliances. And you really need to have a fuse coming from your solar panel. Number one is you can pull this fuse out if you need to disconnect the solar panel so that you know there's no power coming into your system if you're servicing it. And number two is, um, you know, if you're drawing too much off the solar panel or something goes wrong with the diode in your solar panel and you're reversing current through it, just having a fuse makes sure that if something goes wrong and shorts out, it pops the fuse and you don't have a fire. So don't waste money on, on not putting fuses in your system. But what I did find is, you know, you can use a standard automotive fuse. They're made for 12 volts. Um, I bought a little uh, pack of them at AutoZone a long time ago when I had a blown fuse in my car. I don't know how much I paid for them, but I got a bunch of them. So I just used what I had. I have a 5 amp coming from my solar panel. I have a 10 amp going over to my light fixture. And then, you know, the 50 amp big fuse that I got at the surplus store for my um, battery pack. Um, and you can buy fuse holders at AutoZone. They're real nice. Uh, but they cost like $5.89 per fuse holder for these little automotive fuses. What I found was that uh, these, again, little wire holders with the terminals on them fit perfectly over the blade of the fuse. And then you can just use that for your fuse and not have to buy a fuse holder. And these are $0.15 cents a piece. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is just my little solar panel here. Now, I have a very small solar panel. This was like $24 or something on eBay, maybe a little extra for shipping. It's a 10-watt panel. It doesn't put out very much. Um, however, I just need to trickle charge my battery pack, and it can be charging probably, you know, for a month or two, even, you know, maybe once every three weeks in the summer, but probably a couple months in between visits to my shed, in the winter time and it'll just be charging up it has battery connectors in the back a positive and negative and you'll see that in here is a little diode this is a blocking diode 
Most uh, pre-made solar panels are going to have these. This is important because if you don't have this at night, when there's no light, the, the solar panel will actually suck the power out of your batteries and you'll have uh, dead batteries. Uh, many solar chargers also have blocking diodes in them so that that doesn't happen, but it doesn't hurt to have a couple. And as a general rule, you want to keep your blocking diode as close to your panel as possible um, because it's a little bit more efficient that way. And this will just, it aimed up. There's a couple of mounting holes in the back. I'm going to mount it, aim it up at the uh, sun. And what I'll do is put it on a hinge. So uh, the general rule of aiming these is aim them, if you're in the northern hemisphere, you aim them south, dead south, or true south. And you'll aim it at the, uh, at your latitude. So you'll, the angle will be equal to your latitude. And it'll be plus 15 degrees in the winter and minus 15 degrees from your latitude in the summer. Or if you don't want to mess with moving it, just put it right at your latitude. It'll still do pretty good. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you this real quick. This is a light bulb that I bought at Home Depot. Um, I went to Lowe's first. They don't carry them anymore. Um, it is a uh, medium base Edison style connector, just like your standard household bulb. So it fits on the standard household socket. It's a 50 watt bulb um, and it is for RV and marine use. Um, I bought two of these. Um, one uh, cool thing that I also did with another one is I bought a cheap trouble light at Harbor Freight that takes a regular household bulb that plugs into your AC outlet. Cut that off, put a couple of battery connectors on it and I can clip it to my battery and use it under the hood of my car in a pinch if I need a light. Um, but uh, uh, you know, an LED bulb or a compact fluorescent is great uh, for energy efficiency if you get a 12 volt one um, because you uh, are going to, of course, draw less amps off your batteries. However, I'm only going to be using my shed every once in a while, so uh, this incandescent bulb will work just fine. Okay, now the other thing I want to show you is the uh, wiring for my charging circuitry. So I kind of went through it in the previous video how all these are wired up in parallel to go to my batteries. But then my charging wire, this is 14 gauge speaker wire, uh, more than sufficient to handle the half amp that's coming from my solar panel, runs down my little wiring harness here. And then it will go, um, you know, the negative side of that will go into the very first, uh, or the very last battery on the negative side, which is down here. And then the positive side will of course go into the very last battery on the positive side and then these harnesses will actually hook up backwards so that that way I'm charging from one end of my battery pack first and I'm discharging from the other terminals on my battery pack that way I'm pulling my voltage across the entire pack of batteries I'm not drawing and charging one battery first that always seems to go dead first so if you Hook on, you know, if you pull from the last battery and the last battery here for your positive and negative, then it distributes the voltage across your batteries. So I'll hook these up now to show you how this works. So basically you just take your positive and you hook this to all of the positive leads on your batteries, going all the way down your battery pack. Now this battery pack can hold eight batteries. I'm just using five right now that I grabbed real quick to show you this and test it out. Um, I could probably just use a couple, um, but I figured I'd just grab five because that's what I can seem to carry at one time without too much trouble. And then your negatives will just basically kind of hook up in the opposite direction. You know, the negative. Oops. Negative. Make sure you do get your positive and negatives and not uh, cross because you will short circuit and you probably will get something very hot and smoking. Um, as you can see, I've been very careful to really label everything well. Oh, that came off again. And this one I'll probably need to recramp down a little bit because it's kind of sliding off a lot. You can just push it down with some pliers and it'll help it to stay on there better. Uh, but you know, I've taped everything on the negative side in black tape, I've taped everything on the positive side in red tape, and each terminal, I put a piece of red tape on it if it's the positive battery. Um, and now you'll see that I got light, 
nice bright light for when I want to come out. And I also have my power inverter here. Um, grab me that light. So I'll, I'll bring this light right here. This is a standard 120 volt, 100 watt uh, incandescent light bulb. Um, and if I turn that on, voila, I have I'm around 120 volts off of my battery pack. Um, so that's basically all there is to a system like this, is you just want to have uh, fuses and you charge your batteries with the solar panel and you discharge them. Now when I get all this put up in the shed and mounted and I'll have the solar controller in place, I'll do another review here of the whole system and kind of let you know how things are working out. The only thing that I have a little concern about is I might have gone too light on the solar panel and I may need to add another panel or just get a bigger panel, but we'll see how it works.